<laughs> Yo, what is up, you guys? Um, big. For another video, and today's video, we're gonna be trying something new. Okay, three scary true Valentine's Day horror stories. Now I know it's not Valentine's Day. Get off dick. You know what I'm saying? But no. See, uh, this is a new channel I've stumbled across before I started recording or reacting. Mr. Nightmare. I've never heard of this guy. Um, he seems like he has some really good production over here. Wanted to check this out. And if you like these reactions, hit the like button. And now it'll come with more reactions. of, You know, we already do Wincy. And we already do, like, um, more. We all we do a whole bunch of those. I like, got an entire playlist. So, I'm not really new to these type of reactions. But they say they're true. Now, if y'all don't know me, if it's not true, I'm going to say that shit. Okay? I don't give a fuck. You know, I don't give a fuck. Uh, all right. Uh, hit the like button. Subscribe if you're new. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got today in the true horror stories of Valentine's Day. Yes, I'm single. Valentine's Day horror stories. Story one by Ethan. Okay. Ethan. Oh, is that Ethan? I've been dating my girlfriend okay. for three years now. I'll nickname her Nikki. It started yeah. innocently enough that I commented on one of her Instagram stories and we started chatting from there. Eventually, I got her number and then Snapchat, and after a week, we met in person. We started okay. hanging out right after the holidays in January, and the thought of Valentine's Day was already coming up. It was nice having started talking to a girl around that time so that I wouldn't feel the dread of being alone on that annoying holiday. But as Valentine's Day approached, and Nikki and I were okay. a few dates in, she confided in me about a stalker situation she'd been dealing with. What? The man's name is Ben. And he's a guy a few years older than Nikki, who happened to go to the same commuter college as her, met her in creep. class for a group project, and followed her around campus a few times. She never involved police or anything, shockingly. Hearing that this guy found out where she lived, sent her a bunch of creepy texts, which she ignored. She said, Well, that be y'all problem, bro. Seriously. Like, I, I didn't even want to pause it. But it's like, why aren't you going to the police? Like, I know people don't want to be labeled as snitches, bro, but I be singing like a sailor on that mall, bro. He, f bro, he knows where you live. He sends you treat creepy text messages, dog. Like, come on, bro. That's enough for me to instantly go to the police. She Some never blocked the number because she never. wanted to see how far he would go without Are you dumb? Text. When I gauged why she was choosing now to bring this to my attention, she said because he started reaching out to her again, specifically for Valentine's Day. Oh, my gosh. As you can see here. He started ramping up oh, this is, again. Oh, this is real. <laughs> oh, let's read Valentine's the messages. Day. If he doesn't read them, I'll read them. As you can see here, he started ramping up the texting again as Valentine's reading? Day approached. She continued to just ignore it and let the text pile up, about, but he brought it to the him. next level when he left a box of Russell Stone. All right, hold on, let me read that. I want to read it, guys. And Val honestly, you guys, Valentine's Day. if you don't want me to read, then as you can see. I saw Professor Warren to class earlier. I had to, LOL. He's he's literally talking to himself. Are you ever going to answer me again? Ha 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 ha. Why would you even answer this guy? Look, February 7th. I don't even know what day Valentine's Day is on, to be honest. February 10th, 2020. Damn. That's how you know this shit is old. Damn. He woke up. 7 a.m. instantly just started texting it, bro. See here. Do you he want to get drinks tonight? Texting again as I don't know why we can actually talk. We obviously had a connection to just in the class. Let the text pile the up. amount of times we laughed and made jokes. No, bro. You were probably the only one making jokes, and you were nine times out of ten the only one laughing. She was probably fake laughing, most likely. Even if we're just friends, come on. Valentine's Day is coming up. We can do something then. But he brought it to the next level. We can just go. He left a box of Russell. We can go as just friends. This guy's a fucking lunatic. And I don't know, and honestly, to the women that's watching this, y'all gotta take that stuff a little bit more serious, bro. Okay? Like, I understand, like, I don't know what your thought process would be, but you have to act. I mean, you know, these, these niggas out here are fucking weird. They're creeps and they're danger to women. Like, I'm just keeping it a, a absolute stack. And y'all got to be more prepared. I don't know what the story's about to tell, but I'm picking the bear. <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm picking the bear. chocolates on her doorstep. <laughs> Fucking creepy. She knew it was from him because he texted her, I hope you like the gift I left you. Bro, he just left this gifts on This was when she decided porch. to put an end to it and replied to him a long message, which I won't share for her privacy. Okay. But in short, she said he needs help and that she's seeing someone now, so to leave her alone. 
There are a number of ways to get someone's address. No, so, okay, we can blame this guy all day, but we need to put the blame on this girl. I'm sorry, y'all, because it's like, you are you entertained this nigga. Bro, you don't... Oh, you entertained it. You gave this nigga your actual number. You talked to him in the class. Like, just avoid him. You know, you can keep it straight. Like, I understand sometimes it is a little scary dealing with unhinged, like, weirdos to where, like, you probably don't know what their intentions are. They might get you or whatever. I understand that. But you don't, you didn't have to entertain this, especially because you got a nigga now. He can handle that shit. I hope so. That's the Fuck no, bro. You gotta, don't she entertain was scared that. that he got it by following her home one day. See? See? I did my best to make sure that she knew I wouldn't let him do anything to her. Well, fast forward maybe a few oh days, and God. Nikki sent me a concerning screenshot. It was a screenshot of some text from a fake number asking if what? the guy she was seeing was me. Me as in he wrote my name. Now I felt involved and that made me feel moderately uncomfortable. No, you should have been getting rid of the All lock I've in. heard of this guy was that he was a very creepy and overly persistent texter and potentially followed the girl I'm seeing home to her house. And now he's texting her on fake numbers bringing up my name. I would have been was reaching go. the point I, where man. Nikki was close to calling the police if this didn't stop. You should have been told her I'd go that. to the police station with her if he reached out one more time. You did. You, Fast are forward dumb to school. Valentine's I'm Day. Sorry, bro. It was on a Friday this year. Nikki and I went out to eat at a nice restaurant that sat on the water. We were at an outside table because the weather was nice. As we ate, we both took notice to a guy sitting on a bench outside of the dining area by the parking lot with a hat conspicuously pulled down his face as if he were hiding. Nikki made a joke. What if that's Ben? We laughed, but then well, he slightly funny, tilted bear. his head in our direction as that we were not looking funny, at bear. him. And he quickly looked away. <laughs> seconds later, he got up and walked away. Oh, We weren't laughing anymore. Yeah, I wouldn't have been. Now we actually questioned the chances of that actually being him. But after a few minutes, the conversation shifted to something else, and we enjoyed the rest of our time there. Afterwards, we wanted to keep hanging out. It was Valentine's Day after all, but her parents were home. I had the place to myself. So we went together back to my rental house. We were on the couch and things like were getting a bit more intimate. That's when Nikki Ooh. pulled away from me and said, what was that? What was what? I heard it too. What? Something from outside in the backyard. All right, grab the scrack. Want me to go check? Eat I the scrack. She nodded her head. The scrack. I went out to the backyard patio, expecting to hear some animals scurrying off in reaction to my presence. Mm -mm. I slipped on my slides and walked around the yard, looking around for anything that could have fallen over and I found what made the noise. The entire stack of beach chairs that was leaning on the house had been knocked over. I don't know how that would happen unless someone or something bumped into them. There wasn't even Man. the slightest breeze that night. I looked around at the bushes that encompassed our yard, and then, as if my brain immediately could spot something out of place, I locked in my vision on something tall in the bushes. Bro. My neck jutted forward as I jutted. literally tried to focus in... <laughs> Is that a real vocab word? Judd it. My neck judd it was what you was like. What, what the hell is it? Cartoon the shit? Bushes. My neck judded forward. I've never heard I of that. I literally word tried to focus in and get a better look at what I was looking at. I stepped forward a few steps. I had an oh shit moment when I realized it was someone standing in the bushes. He had seen me notice him by this point. I said, Who is that? And the guy started quickly coming out from the bushes. In a quick enough speed that I took it as a threat, as if he were about to charge at me. Yeah. I took the chance to get him on the ground when he was still struggling with the bushes and twigs, and I yelled at him to stay down multiple times. I yelled Nikki's name until she came outside. What and is going I called on the police. Screen? The guy on the ground struggled and tried to get loose a few times, but I more or less Punch had him, him in a steady hold. You when dumped, Nikki came man. outside while talking with the police, I asked her if this was the guy. She gasped and said, "Oh my God, yes." It was the Ben guy who had been harassing her. What's worse is at that moment, I realized he was wearing the same colored shirt that guy with the cap from earlier at the restaurant was wearing. Police got to the house and put him in cuffs. He would be charged with trespassing. Should and taking advantage should of the moment, Nikki showed the officers all of the harassing and obsessive messages she'd been receiving from him. Since he was already being arrested, Nikki pressed charges for stalking and harassment, which Yo. the guy ultimately ended up paying a fine for and getting a misdemeanor. Nikki got an order of protection against him, and now if he ever contacts her again, he'll be arrested again. Put ben this nigga in creep. for at least God, 10 he's years. He's at least halfway smart enough to not have contacted her again, though. 
Bro, y'all acted so late, bro, because let, let's talk about that story real quick. Do I believe that happened? Yeah, I believe it because it's like, bro, the links people, lame niggas will go to like, I understand you have a crush and like you want to know what they're doing on social media or something. Like, I can understand that. But you're taking it to a different level when you're stalking motherfuckers in real life. You know, the boyfriend name, like that's too much. You already crossed boundaries. You're texting quadruple the ultimate lingos of times in messages you text 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 that's extreme that's extreme and y'all gotta know your boundaries these are the people y'all need to just put in jail honestly that's a dangerous to women that's dangerous it just is i'm, I'm sorry bro like but uh i believe that happened it, but but let's talk about this let's say something really bad would have happened let's say if the guy got inside the house tied the boyfriend up did something to the girl we don't know because y'all wait so long to do something. You could have been at him out of there. Went to, go to the police. Y'all want to say, I want to wait a little longer. You dumb fuck. This is how motherfuckers get snatched. So yeah, uh, I believe that story actually happened. So yep, next story. I like that. I like this so far. Samba Baninson. What did I say? Samba Balin. Balon. Balon. This happened four years ago. Four years. Valentine's Day was coming up. My boyfriend and I had planned a cute dinner, like what most couples do. Fuck you. No, As we were walking into the restaurant, there's this couple outside, weirdly staring at my boyfriend and I. Damn. I slightly shove my boyfriend's arm as we get inside, and he gives out his name to be put in the wait line. Oh. The host said it would be a 45-minute wait. Hell she no. She said she would text us when our table was no. ready. My boyfriend said, let's go to the mini golf across the street. Look, so we're I, this is so off topic and I'm about to yap, but I swear to y'all, I'm not waiting more than 25 minutes to 25 fast food, like a restaurant like this. I'm not waiting more than 20 minutes for fucking food. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm just, I don't want the food goddamn that bad, bro. I remember when we was going to like oh, Texas Roadhouse or the Apple BZ or some stupid shit. And then they tell us, oh, 45 minute wait or like an hour wait. I said, um, we get, let's get the hell up out of here. It was a group of us. I said, let's get out of here. I'm not waiting no hour for no fucking table to sit down and eat food that motherfuckers don't even give a fuck about. Nigga, buy this shit yourself and go cook it. I, I I swear to God, I'm not waiting that long for no goddamn food. Unless I'm cooking this shit myself. I'm not, I'm not waiting that long back for a goddamn car. table. I'm just, the lady I don't know about y'all, I'm not waiting that long. And held up her hand, introducing herself as Mrs. Gretty. <laughs> I found it really weird. I looked at my boyfriend. The lady Mrs. still had Gretty. her hand out. I wasn't trying to be rude. I gave her a shake. The lady went on to explain that her and her husband think we're a great-looking couple. Swingers. And photographers and think we would make great photos and to follow them to the studio. She believes the wait time That's will be long. Shit, bro. I don't she know goes on to say that she has no card on her, but their place was a five-minute drive away and they could take us there as well. Red flags are going off. Uh, absolutely. And my boyfriend politely declines and lets we her good. know we have things to do. We good. The look was still one of the most haunting looks ever. As she smiled and sat down next to the husband. As we get in the car, I tell yeah. my boyfriend how creepy that interaction was and how the husband didn't even say a word. As we enter the mini golf place. Yo, no, no, y'all, this, do you know what this reminded me of? Some nigga at my job, bro, y'all. Some guy at my job literally told me something similar to this. He literally said that his girlfriend, shout out to my, uh, shout out to that boy, you know what I'm saying? He literally said that his girlfriend was at a car wash and the guy was sitting inside and then a girl came out to his girlfriend, but the dude, he wasn't there. And the, the girl came up to him and like, and was like, oh, like, or something. And they, like, basically they were trying to get him, like, it, it's basically the same situation. And I told him, I said, bro, that's some traffic and shit, bro. Like, tell her, don't be giving out her number. But she didn't give out her personal number. She gave out the boyfriend number, the guy I work with. I said, dude, tell your girlfriend to be careful, bro. This could be literally wet. Bro. Oh, my motherfucker, bro. Bro, this story just reminds me because he just told me this shit a couple days ago. He said, yeah, tell me why, like, this dude and his girlfriend was in the car and then some lady came out and was talking to her about something. Something. I, I forgot what he told me, but that's that traffic and shit, bro. Like, Y'all got to. Uh. We were pretty surprised to find it empty. This is literally like we the same the situation shit I'm talking off, about. Bro. But in reality, I'm still creeped out. As this place is not really huge, you can see the front door on all the levels. Oh my goodness. So as we're on our fifth round, That's crazy, I hear the entrance bell ring. I turn to look, and my heart sinks. Why? It's the same lady with her husband. She seems to look around, and then as we make eye contact, she gives me the creepiest smile. 
I let my boyfriend know, and he turns to look as they're getting their things. I tell my boyfriend I'm uncomfortable and we should just go wait in the car, as 15 minutes have passed already, so it wouldn't be much longer. He agrees, and we turn around, and they're right behind us, See? giving us the widest smiles. See? Crazy how we both came to this spot, said Mrs. Gretty. This time the husband says, we should face each other, Gretty versus Rod. No. My boyfriend's heart sank in that moment, as no. his last name is Rod's. We politely declined, not wanting to know how they knew that information. Oh no. We said we have to go. Oh no. Both of their smiles faded as we rushed out of there. I told my boyfriend we should just call it a night and go back to his place since it was closer than mine. No. Plus, my parents wouldn't be home until Sunday morning. He said we would go after dinner and not let some random weird couple ruin the night for us. That, those he are swingers waited about 15 minutes in his car, talking about how weird the situation was, as he it gets is. a text from the restaurant saying they're ready for us. Fuck we eat definitely. dinner, and he insists on paying today since it's Valentine's Day, as we usually split the bill. Okay, he goes to the bad. bathroom, and as I'm waiting, I thought I saw that lady peeking out from around a corner. No, you, I convinced no, you myself bro. it was just in my head. How? My boyfriend hey, gets that out. doesn't even make sense. How can you imaginally see someone pop their head out of a corner you thought you saw? How can you imagine that? Well, maybe you could. I, I don't know. And is ready to go. Now, to get to his place, you have to take this long road surrounded by trees. The fuck? As we start the drive, we notice a car following behind. Oh, my God. I let my husband know, and we head into a CVS parking lot. CVS, hey. I have to use the rest. I like CVS. I guess. Since it was going to be a drive, we there. both get out and go. Like Walgreens, when I love we come out. We don't see that car that was potentially following us anywhere, so we make our way to his house. You know that road I talked about earlier being surrounded by trees? Well, while we're driving on it, Bro. we're like three to five minutes onto this road. We heard a loud pop, and my boyfriend stopped his car. His what? two front tires had popped. He what? put two and two together and ran to the car and said, Get out. There's not much more time before they get here. He cut his engine and turned off the lights and locked the door. What? I was so scared and confused, not knowing what was going on. What? I told him we should wait in the car. He quickly got me and we ran into the woods. He told me to shush. We were what? hiding behind some trees and bushes. While we hid, he called the cops and quickly explained where we were at and what was happening. No weapon? The operator asked to stay on the line and the cops would be here in a couple minutes. He said he couldn't stay on the line and hung up. As we stayed me. laying down, we heard a car engine coming up. My boyfriend said to lay flat as he did too. We heard the engine to the car stop, and we heard the familiar voice of Mrs. Gretty, if that was even her real name. Probably not. She yelled, shit, we took too long. We heard a car door close, and then a car quickly what? speed away. Uh, no, not a good idea. We stayed down until the cops got there, which was about two minutes later. We explained the situation and got told we would be contacted if something came up. I called my sister to come pick us up, and he called the tow truck for his car. Four years later, nothing has come up on it, and what? we never found out what they wanted or who they were. They were traffickers. We're now married with a crazy story to tell our kids. And, okay, first of all, I, I promise y'all, if those are not traffickers, I don't know what the hell that is. That that literally sound, Bro, that shit is real, y'all. No, I'm, I'm like, I'm kind of scared, bro, because... I, like bro, what like what if I like what if I get older, guys? Like what like when I say this, like I'm not like I'm 20 years old, but like what if I got older and I had like a daughter, bro? Like, bro, like, and like even if you have a son, it's the same thing, but it's a little like worse with women, man. Yeah, I do feel like bad because motherfuckers are weird, man. <sighs> because that is traffickers, and, and when I see my dog um tomorrow or. Yeah, when I get to work, I'm telling him, thank a lot, keep your girl on your hip, on your hip lock. Because, you know, motherfuckers are weird, man. Because the story I told y'all about the car wash and them coming up to her, like, yeah, something. I don't I forgot what the reason was, but it's that creep shit, bro. I told him, I said, she got to be careful. That's what this, this story reminds you of, man. I swear I'm talking to that nigga tomorrow, bro. Tomorrow when I see him, I'm talking to him. Anonymous. This is some crazy shit. It's lucky not real then. During the fall 2018 oh, it semester, might be real then. I was doing some online classes through a pretty prestigious college. Who are you, nigga? But I knew that I would transfer to my hometown four-year university for the winter semester. Okay. I still wanted to make some new friends, though, so that I wouldn't feel alone. And maybe along the way, it would be nice to meet someone to date, which is what happened. 
I met this girl through Tinder. She was really cool and we had a lot in common. <laughs> Long story short, we started dating and we had a lot of fun together. She wasn't from my hometown and I had noticed that after she came back from Thanksgiving break, the way she behaved and her attitude had changed. What you she mean? was always on the more sarcastic side, but now it just seemed mean. For example, the playful, flirtatious teasing had become way more aggressive. Like what? There was no physical harm, I like should what? say that. It was just the kind of teasing that shouldn't be happening in a relationship. Like what? I just brushed it off as stress due to finals approach. Nah, you gotta explain it so I can tell you if it's too far or not. Because I'm big on the trolling. Like, I troll all the time. But but I know there is a limit to trolling. Like, don't take that shit too far. Or don't, like, you know, this are, this, like anybody who troll for real, like, you know that there's limits that you don't just troll. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I'm an ultimate troll. I like, you know what I'm saying? I'll troll like my lady and shit. I'll troll her. But if I want to know so I can see if that shit was too, like, it's too far. Or joking or sarcasm or angry or bangry. She eventually went back home for winter break. Good. We she always found curve. ways to stay in touch every day, such as oh. text, snap, and occasional FaceTime, either once or twice a week. Once the winter semester started, I moved into an apartment because the dorms didn't seem that fun and I had found something nice that was surprisingly cheap. Literally the night of the first day of classes, we decided to break up. Wow. Like I said, she was from a different state and she was having a lot of trouble being away from home because she missed her family, friends, and pets a lot. Besides wow. me and her roommate, who she didn't really get along with, she barely knew anybody in town. She was just such a shy person. And that's not a bad thing, but like I said, <laughs> she didn't have a lot of friends to surround herself with. So she just wanted to be by herself all the time. So it was a nice exit out without having to be the one that did the dumping because that kind of stuff just gives me too much stress and anxiety. Well, this a is few weeks right went by, and each day I felt a little less sad because when I looked back on the relationship, there were a bunch of issues that I had overlooked. See, you can't do that, It was the week bro. leading up to Valentine's Day, and I was kind of sad because I had some fun things planned that I wanted to surprise my girlfriend with. Too bad. I decided that maybe for that week, I would reactivate my Tinder account really to see if I could get a match and possibly hang out with someone on the holidays so I wouldn't be alone because most of my friends had their own boyfriends and girlfriends. I did about two days before the holiday and I got some matches after a few hours of having the app. I chatted with most of them. Bro, I'm not gonna, this is the weakest chocolate or candy or whatever the fuck this shit is. This is like the, all this in here, dog shit. To be honest, bro, when I get a girlfriend, eventually somehow when, one day, maybe, hopefully, you know what I'm saying? I will not be buying her this bullshit. This is like the weakest gift you could probably get your girl. Uh, or, or, yeah, no, 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 facts. Like, this is weak as fuck. This is, the, bro, I can tell you which one's the worst one. This one. This one? Or, or this one. Don't, bro, I know these are fucking dogs. Oh, it's so disgusting, bro. Asked what their Valentine's Day plans were. And not to my surprise, they were all going out to bars. Personally, oh, that lifestyle isn't really my thing. It just no, doesn't seem mine. that fun. See, to these me. might be a little bit. But better. I always use it as a. Last you can just tell this is dark chocolate. You can tell this is dark chocolate. I, you, if you come near me with dark chocolate, <laughs> I'm pitching your earlobes off. Sorry, I wasn't that desperate. Yo, I'm not yet. playing. I eventually started texting with a girl named Alex, who wasn't into that stuff either. Alex she would rather kid? stay in and watch movies, which is what I would rather be doing too. She even had the same major as one of my best friends and was taking some of the classes he was taking. But she oh. didn't know if they had classes at the same time since they had just started. Oh, he she found was a trying new to girl? figure out everyone's names. The best way to describe Alex is that she had shoulder length blonde hair, cute glasses, freckles, and bright blue eyes. She's white. After texting for about well, an hour, I, I got her Snapchat and we moved the conversation there. I asked if she would want to hang out on Valentine's Day and she was down. Okay. So it was Valentine's Day 2018, riz, which had fallen on the Thursday right of the there. week. <laughs> Luckily, I didn't have any Friday classes, and Alex said she would skip her Friday morning class so we wouldn't feel pressured to end the night so early. The first part of the night went pretty smooth. Okay, okay. We got boy. to McDonald's, saw a McDonald's, movie, and then walked yes, around sir. the downtown area for a while. That's my shit right there. <laughs> to spare you the details, we eventually went back to my apartment and had sex. Oh my honest, god! Why he beat those cheeks down crazy like those? But that's so easy for y'all boys, man. See, me, if I tried to do this, bro, I would just fail miserably, bro. Like, this man, honestly, all he had to do was go to McDonald's theater, and he fucked her. Ah! He went dumb, Everything bro. went great. 
She asked if she could spend the night because it was snowing out and her place was about a 10 minute walk away. So of course I told her she could stay. We eventually course, fell asleep around 1 a.m. I'm a pretty light sleeper, especially when there's someone Ooh, else in the I bed with too. me. Around 3 a.m. It's Alex 3 a.m. It's 3 a.m. Girl. It's 3 a.m. It's 3 a.m. It's 3 a.m. Go stream it all on platforms. 3 a.m. at Halloween. Halloween at 3 a.m. Me up as she was getting out of the bed, but I didn't make her aware that she woke me up. It was pretty dark in the room, but I could see that she was walking towards the bathroom. She turned the light on and shut the door so that it wouldn't seep into the bedroom. Or I maybe was very she tired, privacy. so I just went back to sleep. I awoke again around 5.30 a.m., and to my surprise, Alex wasn't in the bed next to me. I turned to see if she was still in the bathroom, but I couldn't see the outline of the light, so that meant it was turned off. I wasn't in too much of a shock yet. I was just curious as to where she was. So I sat up and grabbed my phone off my bedside table. I didn't have any texts from her saying that she had left, but I was able to see that the clothes she'd been wearing earlier were still on the ground next to mine. What? So she was still here somewhere. I then heard a creak come from the other side of the bedroom. I could see that Alex was just standing in the corner, back what? facing toward me. I was really freaked out. I quietly called out her name and asked if she was okay, but there was no response. No. I turned on the lamp I had on the bedside Bro, grab table. grab a fucking bed. It didn't create too much light, but there was enough. I got out of bed and walked over to her. What the hell? She was just standing there, not even moving. Oh, she must be a sleepwalker. Right? Why the hell are you in the corner? I was so creeped out, but I wanted to see what was going on. I gently placed my hand on her shoulder and said her name again. Bro. And there was no response. What? There were ten oh, she in the upside down. Did they be Gorgon got her ass, bro? I ain't gonna lie. Vector got her in a trance, man. R.I.P. Because when your body start levitating, you get the... <laughs> nah, she's in the upside down. I'm sorry, guys. It's over for her. Like, it, she'll get the levitating. Uh, her eyes gonna be gone. Everything. Vecna, gone. Seconds of silence, and right as I was about to say her name one more time, on. she turned around at an inhuman speed and started screaming like a maniac and hitting me. What? It wasn't the hardest of hitting, but I'm kind of a skinny yep. guy, so she, it she, hurt a bit. She escaped upside down. The scariest part is there was no emotion on her face at all. What you mean, nigga? I backed up and fell over onto my bed, and she followed me, still screaming and hitting me. After what? about 30 seconds of this happening, she ran over to her clothes, grabbed them, and ran out of my apartment. I got off the bed and ran to my front door, which was left wide open, and she was gone. I shut it and locked it. I then noticed there was a horrible smell coming from the bathroom. The door was shut, and when I opened it, the horrible stench came out. What? I turned on the light and found the room in a mess. The shower curtain was ripped off, my medicine bag had been thrown on the ground, and my floor was wet. What? The worst part was that she defecated and smeared it on the mirror. Defecated? I called the she shitted? Defecated. Defecated. She shitted. Right? Y'all gotta let me know. It's defecated. Defecated. You shitted. The worst part was that she defecated and smeared it on the mirror. She shitted. I called the police immediately. And they Absolutely. sent an officer to my place. Absolutely. They asked if they could see her Tinder and Snapchat profile. But of course, both had been deleted. I only had one picture of her that she sent on Snapchat, and Put it I had on the screenshotted screen. it because it was a cute looking picture. Put it on the she screen. She was using a Snapchat filter in the picture. Sadly, there was not really much police could do except take a report and keep an eye open for her in the area. What? They advised me to have a friend sleep over later that night in case she would try to break in. They gotta give which a is what I did. This, bro. I called one of my best friends, Rob. He was the one who had the same major as Alex. He came over later that night, and I told him the whole story. One of the classes she said she was taking, that my friend was also taking as well, was a pretty small class that only met twice a week. I showed Rob the picture I had, and when I asked Rob if he knew her, he said he had never seen her in class. Rob and I watched a movie and fell asleep around 12 a.m. I awoke around 3 a.m. to find someone trying to open the front door from the other side. Not true. After letting it happen for about a minute, it then stopped. I walked over and looked out the peephole but nobody was there. Nothing has happened since, but it still really freaks me out. Wow.
What y'all think? What y'all think about that story, dog? That one, that was a really good story. But I don't think it's real. I'm not gonna lie. There's just no way. I'm gonna look up the word defecated on video. Defecate? Defecate. Discharge feces from body. Yep. So she shit it and smear. She was standing. What do you call that? Nah, that shit giving me the creeps, bro. Nah, that story it might be. Shout out to Night, uh, Mr. Nightmare because you're the first person to give me actual chills. Because this is insane. No, I'm a very light sleeper except when someone trashes my room, my restroom. No, oh God, bro. Bro, <laughs> that comment was funny. Yeah, man. Hey, man, y'all, y'all better hit that like button on this one, bro. I enjoyed this. This was really, really creepy. Uh, shout out to Mr. Nightmare. I've never heard of him, but we're gonna leave that like because, like y'all should do on this video, we're definitely gonna leave that like. Man, hope y'all enjoyed this. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you're new. That gave me the crook. I'm out, man.